Hey, how you doing? I got uh, a pretty good tip for all you guys out there today. Um, believe it or not, there's nobody even on YouTube, because I checked that even has anything about this. So I guess I take it for granted that over the years of me doing installations and having a stereo shop and, and everything on a day-to-day -day basis, the things that we do on a professional level behind the scenes for you kinds of guys that come in and get this work done and what you actually get access to knowledge of actually doing are two totally different things. So it prompted me to maybe just share it with you guys because I really don't have any use for it. I don't do installations anymore. Um, I do them when I want to do them or for myself, when I want to just tinker or have a friend or a family, somebody wants to do something, and that's about the extent of it for me. My contortionist days are over with. But um, enough of that. What, I, what I'm going to teach you today is how to do something called a front rear jump. So what that is, is when you're installing a four channel amplifier, one of the things that I always found least favorite regarding doing that work was obviously running a wire through the firewall and doing the power. That was always a pain in the butt on most cars, unless you're doing like a Toyota or a Honda or something. Those cars are like a joke anyway. But um, when you actually wanted to uh, do the speaker wires from the four channel amp, you want to grab your rears and your front. To do your rears, obviously it's not a big deal because you're going to have your amp located either on your back seat or on an amp rack or a coffin or, or laid out in pretty close proximity to the actual rear speakers, in most cars anyway, unless they're in the rear on you know, the quarter panels where you have to pull the stuff out. But let's just say you have a normal kind of car, everyday car. Uh, I'll use my car uh, because, you know, I know what it is and how it works. Say a Chrysler 300. Okay, fair enough. I have a base model and I have in the front, I got the door six and a half so I have the tweeters up on a dash. It's not a Boston acoustic system. Then I have the two six by nines in the rear deck lid. So aside from taking down that piece of acoustic material, the six by nines are right there and are exposed right there for you to see. It's not hidden. So from your amp to the rear channel is not a big deal, but when you're going to do your front speakers, that's a totally different story now. So with the way copper is these days, if you use good copper wire, which you know I do, copper's expensive, man. It's really like through the roof, way out there. Um, so a trick that you can use, and it's actually no less superior than doing it uh, by running a, a new set of late, uh, leads out to the front. I mean, if you're doing a set of component speakers, by all means, add a nice heavier gauge cable, you know, do it nice, mount your crossovers, split it to your mids, your tweeters, whatever. But for the normal guy who's just gonna replace the speakers or just do, you know, a middle of the road kind of job, which is gonna be probably most use, um, this is a good trick you can use. This here is just a harness that I grabbed from the uh, warehouse, and it's just a pretty simple uh, GM harness. This is actually the factory side, not the side that you would put in if you were putting in an aftermarket radio, then you would use the female and go in there and go color to color to your new radio. So if you're watching this video, obviously you're installing a new four channel amplifier. So in order to save your time and money and buying that wire, running it out to your front channel, what you could do is this. Take your amplifier's rear channel outputs, run them up to your rears just like you normally would. But for your, for your fronts, you're going to do it this way. Um, you're going to take those two leads that you're disconnected from the rear channel, leave them, leave them hanging for now. And you're going to run those and connect them to your amplifier's front outputs. And you might be like, is this guy, you know, high? Or, uh, that doesn't make any sense. It's going to make sense. Watch this. Now, let's just say... Again, this here is the plug behind your uh, radio, the factory side, okay, factory side now. Now, white's your front left, green is your rear left. And you got your gray and your purples, those are your rear channel. So what you do is twist your rear, this here is the negative, put these together, the positive on the rear right, to the positive of the front right. So now I've connected the two rears together. Do the same for the front. Front negatives, put the two together. Front positive, put them together. Now when you turn on an amplifier, your front your front channel is connected to where the old the old wire was for your old rear channel which is going to go into here, back, and connect it to the front. So now, 
using this, you don't even have to run wires up to the front speakers anymore. So just to recap, you're gonna run your rear channel B amp to the new speakers with a new, a new run from the amp to the rear speakers. The two leads that were hanging down from where the uh, radio used to connect to your old 6x9s, you're gonna run some wires from your amplifier's front channel to those two. And this is going to just redirect the amp's output power into your front channel. So that's really a wonderful trick. I did this every day. My guys did it every day. And I'll tell you, man, it's a winner. And while I'm at that, <coughs> let me sh share another piece of knowledge. I don't think it warrants a whole video about it, but um, it's something I think everybody should know. It was taught to me, and I think I should share it with you. This here is just a butt connector and a lot of people don't even know how to crimp a wire believe it or not this here is my Klein crimpers I've had these things for God knows how many years 20 25 26 years maybe anyway when you crimp a wire look for that and this camera ain't all that there's that little line right there what that there is all about is when you're gonna crimp where the, where the crimper actually has that protrusion, and it says 12 to 14 to 10 gauge, this is a 12 gauge butt connector. Put that where it is, because when you crimp the wire like this, inside there is a sleeve, and it'll actually expand. So when you make a crimp and you squish down on it, if you're not on it right and grabbing all good metal and squeezing it onto that wire, there's a good chance that thing could break off or fall out. So I figured it was another little trick. Figured I'd share it with you. I'm not going to do it wrong and try to yank on it and try to be He-Man or anything, but whatever. Hey, it's free information, man. So front rear jump, once again, instead of wasting your money running out the wires, do it the same way. Save time, save you at least a half. Connect your fronts, front left to rear left, cap them off, you know, get a couple crimp caps, whatever, I like these the best. Throw that on there. Again, look at the crimp before you crimp it. There you go. That thing ain't coming off. Front to the rear, front left to rear left. Front right to rear right. That's a wrap. Pretty cool, right?